Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Beginning now the study of the abdominal wall musculature, we first will look at the external abdominal oblique. We have seen already the serratus anterior muscle attaching to ribs in a serrated finger-like manner and interdigitating with these fingers are the fibers of the external abdominal oblique. The external abdominal oblique muscle arises from the lower borders and outer surfaces of the lower eight ribs. And these fibers, after they arise from the costal area, are passing downward towards the pelvic region and towards the midline. This is a flat abdominal wall muscle. And the further down we go, the more aponeurotic these fibers become. When we look at this area in top view, we can see then the direction from the rib margin following downwards, approaching the midline, and now you will notice the fibers becoming aponeurotic. Very thin and very flat in this, the inguinal area. We have laterally the anterior superior spine of the ilium, medially on the midline, the pubic symphysis. Adjacent to the pubic symphysis, approximately one inch to the side, is a bump on the end of the pubic crest called the pubic tubercle. These are important landmarks for all of the abdominal wall musculature. The external abdominal oblique muscle ends by inserting in a ligament that extends from this anterior superior spine to the pubic tubercle. And part of it can be seen, and it is this light white line along here, the inguinal ligament. It closes off the lower abdominal wall uh, from the anterior portion of the thigh. All of the aponeurosis of the external abdominal oblique not only attaches down to inguinal ligament, to the pubic crest and tubercle, but passes in front of the midline rectus abdominis muscle throughout its entire extent from pubic symphysis upward to the costal margin. In this area, we will see the spermatic cord. And the spermatic cord is an outpocketing through the abdominal wall. Now, it does not break through the abdominal wall, but in development, it pushes each and every one of the abdominal wall muscular structures in front of it. Sometimes it has a muscular coat, but in general, the coverings of the spermatic cord are fascia. We have three flat abdominal wall muscles. There are three specific cord coverings. The cord coverings, however, are called spermatic fascia, whereas the specializations in this area we will call abdominal wall fascia. This, what you're looking at in close-up now, is the external abdominal oblique passing towards the midline in this location. And we can see some inguinal specializations. This muscle, first of all, should be studied like all of our other muscles for origin, insertion, innervation, and blood supply. But here in the inguinal area, we have very specific specializations of each muscle. As this aponeurosis comes down towards the midline, and I will place a probe on the midline for orientation, we have a thickening of the aponeurosis that is swinging lateral to the spinal, uh, to the spermatic cord, and another thickened band in this area, fibers well shown approximately in here, that go down medial to it. The lateral cruse, the thickening 
the lateral cruce goes to the pubic tubercle to attach along with inguinal ligament. The medial cruce passes to the pubic crest. In order to further identify structures in this area and to clarify it, we must follow the dissection procedure now in the dissection guide the remembering that these muscles are extremely thin and sheet-like. And so don't get carried away, else you will reflect more than the one muscle at a time. Proceeding with the external abdominal oblique muscle, we reflect it from its origin and note the thinness of this flat abdominal wall muscle. Moving downward again into the aponeurosis of the external abdominal oblique and into the inguinal area, we can again review the anatomy that we just saw. For orientation, we have the anterior superior spine above, the pubic symphyseal region here, and the midline extending up to the umbilicus. This midline structure is the linea alba, and it is formed by all of the aponeuroses of the flat abdominal wall muscles coming together along that line. Now, when we look at this area of the inguinal ligament, and the lateral and the medial crura, I'm going to place the probe behind the aponeurosis, and I think we can now see the lateral crua, the lateral cruce, much better than before. The thickening called lateral cruce, and now swinging over to the other side of the spermatic cord, the medial cruce, bulging up towards you and seeing the, you can see the probe beneath it. There are some fibers that run between the lateral cruce and the medial cruce in this area just above this superficial inguinal ring. These are called intercural fibers. Now, the superficial inguinal ring was named hundreds of years ago by an anatomist who, in dissecting this area, would al always break through uh, the fascia that continues on along the spermatic cord from the external abdominal oblique, and therefore there was a ring-like hole made in this area. That is how the superficial inguinal ring got its name. Because the fascia that he broke through, which is the external spermatic fascia, can now be seen in this area. It is so thin that it is practically transparent, and it appears that you're completely looking through the a fascia as if it were non-existent. It is very, very thin, and as I move the lateral crew, you can see this thin fascia, the external spermatic fascia, passing downward onto the spermatic cord and completely surrounding it and the testicle on that side. Continuing in this dissection, then, we must go back and look at the anatomy overhead to look at the anterior superior spine of the ilium, the inguinal ligament, and now cutting carefully from the anterior superior spine of the ilium and downwards along the inguinal ligament. We are in the plane that separates the external from the internal abdominal oblique. When this muscle is reflected, probe is removed, we can begin to see internal abdominal oblique passing upward from its origin on the back of the thoracal lumbar fascia, the anterior two-thirds of the iliac crest, the lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament. And these fibers are running, you see, directly opposite that of the external abdominal oblique. Fibers of external abdominal oblique were passing 
in this direction. These internal oblique fibers are passing beneath it. And they are passing upward towards the midline. And the aponeurosis of the internal abdominal oblique splits. Some of its fibers going in front of the rectus abdominis to join with the external abdominal oblique aponeurosis and other fibers pass behind the rectus abdominis to join with the fascia of the transverse abdominis muscle. The section needs then to continue in this area of the inguinal ring. More clarification is required so that we now can look in detail to the internal abdominal oblique. Continuing on with our dissection of the inguinal area, for clarity, I have cut the lateral cruce from the medial cruce and filed directly upward through the abdominal wall musculature. We fold back now the external abdominal oblique for a very clear view of the internal abdominal oblique with the fibers again coming from inguinal ligament and passing upward and fanning out towards the midline. There are a few specializations of the internal abdominal oblique. And as I indicated previously, the fascia that covers the spermatic cord is continuous with all of the layers of the abdominal wall musculature. And likewise, we have the same thing on the area of the internal abdominal oblique. Here again is spermatic cord. And moving it medially, we can see instead of only fascia surrounding this cord, going onto it, we have muscle fibers as well embedded within here. This is the cream master muscle and fascia, all from the internal abdominal oblique. And here these fibers now will spray downward on the spermatic cord and encircle the testicle. In addition, the lower fibers of the internal abdominal oblique will arch over above the spermatic cord and then come down onto the lower portion of the linea alba or actually arch completely around to get to the area of the pubic symphysis and pubic crest. These arching fibers are called Faux inguinalis fibers. So these are the lowest portion of the flat abdominal muscle, the internal oblique, with the very lowest fibers of the internal abdominal oblique spreading down along the spermatic cord as the cremaster muscle layer and fascia. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.